Let's go Brand and then Claire. Uh, Brand Strickland, Aniston Star. Denny, with the adversity that you faced uh, earlier in the season, did you ever doubt or worry that you would have the ability to be this close this late in the season? No, I, I've really felt like over the last couple of years I've, I've had potential to run with the 48 and, and whoever might be uh, the championship contender. It's been a few years coming, I feel like, that you know that we've had these opportunities. Uh, it's just this this has the, been the first year we've put it all together. Uh, we put up, put the expectations, uh, put out the expectations, and then been able to succeed in achieving them. We've done that this year better than than any other year. We've closed at the end of races better than what we ever have. Uh, I've always had speed in the sense of I've always led a lot of laps during the course of my career, but always had very few wins to show for it. And, and over these last two years now, it's just you see it in the win column, you see it in the top fives, the points position at the end of the year. We've just steadily gained ourselves back to the top of the standings after having success early, falling to 12th my second year. We've just slowly built back what what championship contender that we, we were right from the get-go. I guess what more I was talking about was dealing with ACL and meniscus and all that kind of stuff. Did that? Did you worry that that would impact I the mean, complete season? Well, it, it's tough to say because, I mean, I, when I decided to get it done, I was 20th or so in points, and, and we, I knew it was too early to panic because our team never really runs good until – five or six races into the season. So um, I knew our performance every time we get to the spring Martinsville race always seems to turn right at that point. Um, so I, I didn't know the impact that the, that the knee situation would have. And, and obviously winning two weeks after having the surgery, I knew it was not going to be an issue. If I could win there at Texas, the track I'd never won before, then it was going to be a no issue. So, But it has been a long year in the sense of a lot of ups and downs and and all that, uh, obviously, is, is giving us some good fuel. Let's go Claire and then Jeff Gluck and then uh, Mike Embry. Claire B. Lang, Sirius NASCAR Radio. Is it sort of a thing where the more you think about being careful here, the more something creeps up on you and that you in this position in the chase have got to force yourself uh, not to think too much about how you can drop back and stay out of it and then come back and it gets intense? I mean, you could really kind of mess yourself up, and then that could put you in a precarious position, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you can't, I mean, it's hard not to think about it because it, you're constantly thinking of a way to, how could I avoid the big one? If any of, uh, we got some pretty smart drivers out there and no one has really figured that out. So, I mean, you've got some guys that have better average finishes and seem to finish more than others. But even the best restrictor plate races, racers that you talk about, whether it be Harvick or McMurray or whatever you want to talk about, or Kurt Busch, They've all had their as many wins. They've had twice as many probably DNFs. So no one has figured this thing out simply because you never know where where that wreck is going to happen or start. So it's just a it's a it's a matter of chance and luck. Who's going to make the mistake? And and all I can control is make sure I'm not the one that causes the big wreck. Uh, and and just constantly be aware of who's around me. Let's go with Jeff Gluck and then Mike Embry. Jeff Gluck from SBNation.com. Denny, talking about the, your, your desire to beat Jimmy heads up, it, it, I think that one time you said that there was some sort of story from your late model days of uh, some competitor that, or maybe it was you even, that you had, didn't have enough funding and your competitors pulled money together mm -hmm. or something. Can you recount that story, and, and does that relate to how you've developed this philosophy? Um, I don't know if it relates, but, I mean, basically it, it came down to um, I was to the second or second or third race of the season from the end uh, of our season, and basically uh, we were in a points battle. I didn't have the money to to go to the following week because we had just simply tapped out and, and put all the money on credit cards that we possibly could. And uh, so one of my competitors' owners came up and offered to pay for my way for the rest of the season um, because he felt like. If if he went out there and he won the next two weeks in a row and, and won championship or whatever, he wasn't beating the best because the best wasn't out there. Well, because of circumstances. It wasn't because uh, his guy was better on that particular week. Um, and I think of it a lot like this. You know, I'm, I'm not – the championship, I hate would hate to see it decided this weekend 
in, in the sense of, you know, whoever comes out of here with the lead or makes a big move, they're the ones who are champions uh, because of, you know, something that uh, myself, the 29 or the 48, can't control. Um, but, you know, obviously that's why I say I would like for it just to stay where it is when, when we leave this weekend so we can see these last three weeks who's got the best stuff. And, and, and then you can compile who's the best driver over these last ten weeks. And right now I think it's been pretty much dead even between us. The only thing that's going to change, possibly the champion, is would be this weekend. And I think it's a lot of the same thinking. Let's go right here, Mike Embry, and then Rusty. MikeEmbrySpeed.com. Oh, would there be a particular advantage to you to Sunday to attempt to race where the 29 and 48 are, or, or is the opposite of that true? Would you sort of try to avoid that neighborhood and separate yourself from them either – Behind them or in front of them? I think they'll be in two different places. Right. To be honest, I think the 29 uh, will probably try to stay up front. And I think the 48, his typical strategy in the fall race is um, to be in the back. So we're, we're definitely going to be between them somewhere, I, I think. But, uh, you know, if I'm not in the top five positions, I would like to see myself in the, in the bottom five just because y you eliminate a little bit of risk. You know, not being middle pack. Middle of the pack is the absolute worst place. If if I'm there, at any point of the race, it's, it's I don't want to be. I, I, I'm looking for an escape route. Rusty, Rusty Ball and NASCAR Media Group. I'd like to ask you just to look ahead for a second. You've talked about the next three <laughs> races: Texas, Phoenix, Homestead. They're obviously all good tracks. You've said it. The paper, black and white, also shows it. If you could specifically talk about Phoenix and that track and what it is that that makes you so good there well i think the the phoenix is probably the track where um you know jimmy's probably the strongest of, of the three of us um he, he's got a really good record there and and it's been a very up and down racetrack for us you know in in, in the past and we really didn't get a sense of where we stood competition wise because i had that the the acl problem uh, immediately uh, that weekend so I never really got a chance to see how my car was really going to run that weekend um, so we don't really know where we stand all, all we can kind of go by is 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 our last three short track races mile or less uh, we've got you know a, a two wins and a second uh, dating back to Richmond Martinsville and now Loudon New Hampshire so that kind of gives us a good indication that we should be good when we go to Phoenix uh, so that's a, a little bit more encouraging. So we know we're going to need to be good because we know the competition uh, between those other two guys should be um, should be pretty stiff. We'll probably have, have to win the race to gain points on either one of them. Any more questions for Denny? One more, Mike. Yeah, this is sort of an off-the-wall question. Mike Muller, Mike Muller net. If NASCAR were to give a point, for every lap led here, or say in the last 10 races of the chase, how would that affect the way you guys, obviously you, w you wouldn't be dragging around in the rear of the pack here, for for example, but would that be an interesting way of trying to get guys to lead up front, or would it just be sort of bozo? No, I, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I, I think at this racetrack, uh, to, to keep, it would keep single file racing from happening. Um, but there's got to be some kind of reward for actually winning when, that 500 miles is over with but yeah i mean rewarding individual laps led on super speedways would just open up the door to just ridiculous amount of racing i don't know how many cars will be left at the end of the day but uh, it, it for sure would turn up the intensity about 300 300 degrees anything else denny for denny denny we thank right, you thanks. and appreciate you being in good luck sunday